Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel with me GWFM of course and yeah it's another rant about Leeds United and today it's going to be Captain Cooper question mark is he the right man to take us forward in terms of the captaincy before that though we've got the two games since last time hopefully you joined us and uh, yeah obviously discussing Derby County and the recent win finally a win get in against uh, Brentford so we'll get into those first we'll start off with the Derby County 2-2 draw um, did feel like a loss to be fair and obviously before I get into anything else I just want to say thank you for the comments in the last video greatly appreciated I'm loving the interaction at the minute um, and yeah uh, long mate continue basically I'm glad uh, that you seem to be enjoying it anyway put it that way uh, one person in particular name a loser at the minute said oh, I should make it a series um, if that's something you might think is is um, worth doing let us know as well see if you agree with him and just let us know in the comments below um but hey, look at derby county feel free of course to disagree and give your reasons why below you know if you if you think i'm talking shite tell me but also back it up uh, with your reasons uh, you know try and convince me that i'm wrong and try and convince me your reasonings or whatever but anyway into the uh my the notes i wrote down from the other day um obviously well not the other day nearly a week ago wasn't it but, yeah, from what I've written down, the first 20 minutes, it was pretty dire. We're all derby, and I must admit, I was shitting myself. My ass was like this again. And then, out of nothing, a long punt forward towards Dallas. Bit of a miscontrol, but it set up perfectly for him for a volleyed cross. And there was the soccer peeling off, scoring against the run of play. But we didn't care, we didn't give a fuck. We're winning 1-0 against derby, and, and like, you're thinking, bloody hell, what's going on here? But the performance wasn't quite there. And we did continue not to pay, play that well. And we were a bit, sat a little bit deep, I suppose. I, I, I guess the game plan was to frustrate them and maybe catch them on the counter. That's pretty much exactly how we did it to get his goal. But then they scored just for half-time. Shocking goal to concede with the man in question. You know, Cooper and Debock. Debock having the biggest mare of all time. For me, very poor. Uh, but yeah, Cooper and him getting like caught like, between each other. I don't know what happened exactly, but basically... Cooper ended up heading it back. It was a soft header and ended up scoring from from it, basically. And it was very, very disappointing. Big kick in the teeth just before half-time. Um, you know, it changes, like, the complex complexion of the game um, for the second half, anyway. Um, but going into the second half, it was pretty much the same for, like, the next quite five, ten minutes. And then Samu Saiz came on and it just cha changed into a completely different game. Wasn't sure what sort of react reaction or reception he was going to get after, obviously, the spitting incident. Which still I don't condone, but it is where it is. We've got to move on from it now, it seems. But anyway, he did change the game. The game became stretched. It was end to end, it seemed like, like anyway. And yeah, we played miles better. And we got his reward. I mean, they got a free kick. And uh, I seem to remember it was blocked. And then Calvin Phillips, who's had a lot of stick lately, which some of it might be justified, but sometimes I think, you know, it's not that, it's not as bad as what people say he is, uh, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, he uh, nice little dink across to Saez, who charged forward. Did I think it was Vidra in the end? I thought it was uh, Kyo, but it wasn't. It was uh, Vidra, and then played through Alioski. Two bites at Cherry. A little bit fortunate where the ball ricocheted when it hit the keep hit Scott Carson on the. I think it hit him on the knee or something. Uh, allowed him to do a diving header into pretty much an empty net. But we were in in that moment. We were probably good value for it. We seemed to be attacking a lot more, looking more threatening, more dangerous. Uh, again, still playing counter attack sort of, but like I said, it was more stretched because no, no, not really anyone in the division really can handle Saez, in my opinion. He's just he's that good. He's quality, which is why we need him. It, it makes you wonder where we would have been if, had he not been suspended in all these games. Uh, and and to be honest with you, with that in mind, would we have still had? Would we have still had Tom, Thomas Christensen as as manager, or head coach, as it were? Uh, but it is where it is now. Um, I think Hagen Mottam's even said how talented he is and he just basically said it's all the other stuff off the ball, on the ball, so he's, he's basically he's basically licked his ass, <laughs> like probably most of us fans. But yeah, very, very good performance from the entire team to the point where Pontus Janssen gets the man of the match, 30 seconds later we concede. Scrappy goal, bit of a poor goal to concede, but... To be honest, if you think about it, the, the balance of the whole entire game, probably a fair result, very frustrating, felt like a, a loss to us. But what you've got to think of is, at this point, and moving on to the next game shortly as well, is we were 
everyone would have thought like before the run of fixtures, we'd have lost every, all six games of the of this tough run, and we've lost one and drawn two at this point. So I don't think you can be too disgruntled so far. You know, obviously it's not it's it's still at this point no no wins, but you could see there was progress uh, if you if you know what I mean. We were lucky against Bristol City that you know the fans seemed to g the, the players on and we had twenty minutes that were awesome, but there was definitely progress from that point in my opinion. Uh, of course. Obviously, you can uh, disagree and say what you want below. Let us know. So moving on to the Brentford game, I just want to say that Dean Smith, their manager, is an absolute wanker. Blaming it on the grass being too long. What a gimp. I mean, what a, a shit thing to, to blame it on. I mean, come on, Brentford. You, you, not too long ago, you were playing on pitches like that week in, week out. So I don't know what he's complaining about, to be honest with you. Um, first half hour, you know, we didn't do... That well, if I'm honest with you. But then after that, we just seemed to stop them playing. It just seemed to be all us. I think the goal definitely helped. Cooper getting his first goal from a set piece that seems like forever. It might actually be his first goal for the club. I can't remember because it's been that long since he scored. Um, I'm pretty sure he probably has, but I just can't remember any off the top of my head. But yeah, we stopped them playing. I mean, I think it was Woods who was running the show a little bit. We seemed to stop play, stop him playing, putting the pressure on all the time, off the ball. Um, like defensively was a lot better in my opinion and after that point after we scored I didn't see us really going on to lose the game I actually felt confident for the first time it was weird but that being said I mean it was helped by the fact that Felix made a good save at 0-0 um, a long range effort it, it looked like it was going right in the top corner um, I picked the he just picked it out top bag you know um and to be honest with you, the fans responded to it. They all applauded him. And I just got the feeling that that might have upped his confidence a little bit. He didn't seem to make many, if, if any, mistakes. I know there was a bit of a shot that he parried away or a cross that he parried away a bit late, latish on. But I know I said we are confident about <laughs> going on to win the game. Um, while ever it was 1-0, though, I always felt that we were going to concede just because of the fact that Felix was in the net. That's, that's the... That's what he does to to me as a fan. I don't know if it does it to you. Whether he just it just makes you think we're going to concede. Um, but I'm I'm the one thing I will say is that I'm absolutely buzzing to be proven wrong and eating humble pie. Um, but it is what it is. I still feel that way, and I, I personally still think that he'll end up going it come the end of the season. And Heckenbottom will get his own goalkeeper in, in my opinion. Now, one thing I did, I, well, I will say is Clive T mentioned last time uh, on in the comments. I didn't actually physically reply. I think at this point, um, and I'll reply now. Basically, he, he mentioned that he, he didn't think four four two was um, a positive change. Now, when I mean positive, I mean like. I'm not saying the performance was better. It was meaning going more attacking with two strikers up top. Um, I get completely get what you say, but I think the only way that the four five or well, four three two one, sorry, four two three one, sorry, with the attacking midfield centre, if you like, Saez is the best player we need in that role. Now you might argue Hernandez might be good in that role as well. I just don't know. I don't think he's got the running power like what what Saez has or the, the dominance in terms of running with the ball. Um, he's not quick enough, if you know what I mean. At least size has got a bit of pace about him. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I was meaning by the positivity in terms of changing the formation to four four two. Otherwise, you did ask a very good question: Who would you get in? The, which goalkeeper for the championship would fill you with confidence? And to be honest, they've had a think, and I'm trying to think of the ones that we were linked to at the beginning of the season. Like we were linked with uh, Stockdale. They got they got uh, five put past them by I think it was Brentford. So. It says it all, doesn't it? I mean, that, that's what can happen. I mean, we could have ended up with a, a championship winning or second place coming. I, can't, I think it was second place, wasn't it, Brighton? Um, you know, in Stockdale. And is that conceding five goals? I mean, none of the goals might not have been his fault. Birmingham are just a poor side, but they still beat us, didn't they? But, you know, it is what it is. Going back into the performance against Brentford, and I think it was a decent performance. And it shows, like I said before, steady improvement. Uh, definitely progress uh, in in seeing what what Heckenbottom is trying to get the team to do uh, in terms of his style of play, and it's probably a little bit more direct. I know a lot of people don't like direct football. You know, hoofball always banded around, especially when Warnock was here or here in my house. You know, Ellen Road. But um, yeah, it's just it, it's interesting. I think I don't know if it's the belief he's instilling back in them or something, but they seem to be working harder for each other. Uh, I know that obviously Dubok had a bit of a mare the other day and a couple of other players that play so well, but 
you know, we still got a result. And like I said before, three games, Salah trying to stay positive here, um, or think positive, undefeated in three games, right? Only lost one of the first four games of this six-game run. So you've got to put it into perspective, like how we were playing before. It is improvement. Don't don't matter about the performance, really. The results are improving, and you know as long as that happens, and you know if I think the performance is continuing to improve, and obviously we keep eight to ninety minutes at a time. If we can do that, which it's never going to happen every single game, we're always going to have teams that are going to be better than, than us for well, better than us in general but also better than us for maybe 20-minute periods at, at the very least, I would imagine. It's very rare you have a completely dominant performance. I think there was only one last season that we had a, actually against Derby County at home where even though it was only 1-0, you never th- felt that Derby were going to score. It was like a complete performance. And staying with the positivity, you know, what you've got to think about is despite a horrendous run, that win and everyone else losing... All results went our way pretty much, our drawing, dropping points left, right and centre. We're only five points off the playoffs now. I know we're still only 11th, but it's five points. It's four, sorry, 12 games to go and, you know, 36 points to play for. Five points is very a very small amount. Can't see every single team from between 6th and us winning every single game or only losing maybe two games. Obviously, it's going to be paired with we're not going to win every single game, but... Hopefully we might find a balance. Who knows? There's always one team makes a late surge. Who knows? Maybe it could be us. But obviously, trying to stay positive. That's what we're going to think. Obviously, if we lose a couple of games, then forget about it. I think that game was probably make or break the game against Brentford. And I'm, I'm so glad that we, we, one, performed well. And two, well, two, we won. And three, kept a clean sheet, which is a rarity. It has been a rarity uh, for quite a while. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we drew against Hull, um, nil-nil. But... I mean, we really should have lost that, if I'm honest. But, um, yeah, we obviously lose it in pretty much every single game. Otherwise, it's just been a a nightmare, hasn't it, really? Right, moving on to the the subject that is in the title, of course, which is Cooper, basically, as captain. What do you actually think of him being captain? Um, Me, I'm not convinced. And to be honest with you, I wasn't a fan of how he was selected. Thinking back, if you remember... um, Christiansen decided that he wasn't going to choose a captain, he was going to let the players decide. Now, I'm not sure that's the right way to go, because surely if there's going to be little clicks or something in within groups, and there always is, it doesn't matter what, you know, Not everyone is not going to get on with everyone, like the best mates are going to go to the pub together, going to go for curries together or whatever, whatever they get up to. Um, and it'll be a case of whoever had the most votes sort of thing will be the captain, and it just happened to be Liam Cooper. You know, he might be a top lad. I don't. I don't know at all. I don't know what he's like or anything. I just know that for me, that a, a captain needs to be someone that if the team is struggling and the loot on the losing run, he needs to get out all, all of his of his fellow teammates and try and get a, a performance out of them. But he's making mistakes as well, and that's obviously it's not going to be really inspiring, in my opinion. Obviously, feel free to tell me that I'm talking shite. You know. Um, I've written a few notes on here. But the other thing for me is, I mean, it kind of ties the next two points that I've written down, is last season, if you remember, we obviously had Pontus Janssen and Kyle Bartley. And Cooper was like playing third fiddle. And he was not really playing that often. The last time I seem to remember him really sticking out and playing, well, apart from when he was injured, um, that's Janssen that is, is the loss against Sutton. And he got sent off in that game as well. Um, obviously he's got a red card in him as he's proven this season as well but I, I just thought with him being fringe I was really surprised that he was selected I thought they might, would have picked someone else you know probably I think everyone was probably expecting someone like Pontus Janssen you know someone who's been showing passion in the game just because it, you know they seem to understand what it means to be leads well Janssen seems to do anyway you get that feeling um, and moving on I mean it's more it's, it's more the, the captaincy that uh, I, I disagree with. I don't think he's a bad player. Not that bad anyway, but it, there's, there's definitely worse that we've had over the years. But I wouldn't, one thing I will say based on last season is when we had Kyle Bartley and Pontus Janssen together, we were formidable. And every time Liam Cooper came in, usually because Janssen were injured, um, but every time Cooper came in, I always thought straight away, that, that's that's clean sheet out window. I felt exactly the same about Wes Brown for England. If he played, or Cooper played for Leeds, 
straight away they've got a one goal head start and I'd say probably 95% of the time I think that was true uh, feel free to prove me wrong of course um, but it, it's just an estimate obviously but yeah I don't know I mean I think personally I, I, might, I, I think uh, Heckenbottom will leave it till the end of the season they'll pick his own captain next season um, I think he's just trying to it, end it there he's inherited this team is none of these players he's brought in himself, which obviously we were discussing about Arta before. Um, I know he's done a bit of a, a Q and A sort of thing. I haven't fully looked at it yet because I wanted to get this recorded and sorted. Um, but basically, um, I don't know. I, I just think I think he'll change it personally. Uh, I'm not sure if he thinks Cooper will will well, one be still here next season. Obviously, they're all on long term contracts, so maybe it all depends. Um, he didn't do too much wrong against Brentford, granted. But I think he's got to show some massive improvement. If one is going to stay and two is going to keep the captaincy, don't mean to be like, you know, doing this to you, but, you know, maybe I should turn my fingers around that way. There we go. But to summarise, you know, I say summarise, uh, to ask you a question to summarise, rather, who would you choose? Would you choose it at all? You know, I'm a talking shy about him and I should just leave him to get on with his captaincy and is the right man for the job. I mean... A few people said Ailing maybe should be because he seems to be the biggest character off the field. So for the off the field reasons, he should he should be the captain. But we don't know. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes. And like I say, it's only looking from the outside in. And um, obviously, if he's doing a good job in terms of off the field, then fair play to him. But I would just I would just surprise. I challenge anyone to say that they were not surprised when he he was named the captain um, compared to like some of the other players that were at the team. I mean, obviously. I think at the time, I want to say at the time, Liam Brickcup was still at the club and he was the club captain um, and, you know, he left and there's been a lot of games where we needed a leader and we got rid of one right there. Um, I did like Liam Brickcup. Some people didn't, I do know that, but I, I did like him. He was no-nonsense, got stuck in and that's sometimes what we needed this season, which I'm hoping, which is my, my choice, providing he keeps performing as he has done since he joined, will be for sure because he's someone who seems to get stuck in, seems to give a shit, um, and he's quite decent as well in terms of technically. He seems to be technically able. Um, and he's obviously his, his big money transfer so far, it seems, um, four and a half million. So, But I don't know. I think he's been very verbal on the pitch. Uh, I've been impressed with him so far. Obviously, he didn't play against Brentford, which means he'll probably miss uh, the next game against Middlesbrough if it's based on you know what Heckham Mott has been like because obviously he, he, he stuck with... Uh, the Saga and Roof, which obviously we're probably going to stick with the Saga anyway, but it stuck with Roof because uh, against um, Brentford because he came on and scored. Uh, so I would imagine if it's a win inside, is it going to change a win inside? I, I would guess probably not. Um, and I reckon that Forshaw will be on the bench. Uh, that's if he's still uh, around. Uh, I would imagine so after <laughs> nearly a week uh, after, because it's on Friday night, of course, uh, on Sky Sports Leeds. And yeah, that's my pick. Just let us know what, what your thoughts are on, on that anyway. And thank you very much, obviously, for watching. It's greatly appreciated if you have got to this point. And obviously, as well, um, you know, if you think there's any other Leeds fans that might appreciate something like this, go ahead and share it. It'd be greatly appreciated as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, finally, the usual spiel that I do for the, those that have watched from the beginning. I do Football Manager on this channel as well. If it's something you might be interested in, go ahead and check it out. It's um, a team I'm doing at the minute is Tramia Rovers. Uh, it's obviously it's just make believe in it, but it's something I enjoy, and yeah, it'd be great if you could check it out if you are interested in Football Manager. Maybe even if you, even if you're not, but I would imagine you'd find it pretty boring. It's only people who play Football Manager would understand uh, why it's so addictive is the game. But anyway, enough uh, waffling. I'll probably do another one next week uh, after the um, the result of the Middlesbrough game. It probably be the uh, the Tuesday again. I record them on a Monday. It's the best time I can I get to record them, um, and yeah, probably do it for Tuesday uh, next week. So yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed it, and yeah, hopefully you'll join us for the next one. Until then, I'll see you then. Bye bye. <laughs>